Hello and welcome to Caster Reviews. I've decided to cut my hiatus short to discuss one of my favorite fighting game series, Street Fighter. A lot of people that know me know that I enjoy fighting games, and the Street Fighter series has served as my gateway into other series such as The King of Fighters, Tekken, and Killer Instinct. It's also timely that I'm taking a look at this series since Street Fighter V Champion Edition is coming out this Valentine's Day. My discovery of the series didn't start with Street Fighter 1, but like most people I started with Street Fighter 2. After playing Street Fighter 1, I now know why. I sort of foreshadowed my feelings on this game in my first ever review. It definitely feels like the first game of a franchise, which usually are not that good. But I'll elaborate on that later. Street Fighter was created in the arcades in 1987 by Capcom's Takashi Nishiyama, who would then help SNK with Fatal Fury. Also, the father of Mega Man, Keiji Inafune, worked on this game as an artist as his big break in the gaming industry. Even though people weren't necessarily aware of the game's existence, Street Fighter 1 was innovative with its command input special moves and 6 button layout. Street Fighter 2 did a lot more for the genre, but I'll get there next week. As far as ways to play this game are concerned, it was released for the TurboGrafx-16 and on the Wii Virtual Console as Fighting Street, which never made sense to me. The way I'm playing it is through the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, an arcade perfect mega collection of every main Street Fighter game up to Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. You can get this collection on all three major consoles, so I'd recommend that method if you're morbidly curious. Without further ado, here's a look at the lesser known original Street Fighter. The story of this game is non-existent. From what we know from future games, our main character is a Japanese martial artist named Ryu who enters a global fighting tournament to prove his strength. In the final match against Sagat, the king of Muay Thai, Ryu loses, and as Sagat tries to help him up, Ryu feels a surge of dark power and throws a powerful Shoryuken, giving Sagat a giant scar on his chest. What I just told you doesn't actually play out in the main game, that's just the story that Capcom is going with for continuity's sake. If you take the game at face value, it's just 10 fights in 5 locations across the world. Either way, the story doesn't really matter in this game, so don't bother paying attention to it. But there are characters in this game that will make appearances in future titles, like Gen, Birdie, Eagle, Adon, and Sagat. Considering that Street Fighter came out in 1987, it looks pretty damn good. The character sprites are great looking in addition to the stage backgrounds. Even stages in the same country have different backdrops, such as in America, where you fight Joe in a scrapyard and you fight Mike in front of Mount Rushmore. The one problem that plagues this game and its sequel is slowdown. I honestly don't know if it's in there for effect or what, but when you land a special move, the game goes into super slow-mo. It's a little off-putting when it happens, but it never messes up your inputs. You'll have enough trouble with them regardless. The music is also kind of forgettable. I can't really name any tracks, the iconic themes of Ryu and Sagat don't exist yet, and the characters yelling all the time drowns out the soundtrack. Surprisingly, Street Fighter also has voice acting. Whenever you lose a fight, your opponent taunts you with the same line of dialogue, and whenever you win, your opponent shoots you a backhanded compliment. This is the only fighting game I can think of where the loser gets to talk shit at the end of the fight, so that's interesting. Overall, the presentation is pretty solid, and it's not the reason why people never talk about this game. The gameplay is the reason why no one talks about this game. Where do I fucking begin? Let's talk about the game's major innovation, special moves. They're great. Ryu has the Hadouken Fireball, the Shoryuken Uppercut, and the Hurricane Kick, Tatsumaki Senpukiyaku. They also hit for incredible damage, but at a cost. You can barely fucking do them half the time. From what I've researched, it's because there was something up with how inputs were recorded in the game, and it only records where you let go of the button as opposed to pressing it. Either way, I wouldn't rely on special moves, just use your normal punches and kicks. Ryu has three different strengths of punches and kicks, light, medium, and heavy. Not a lot of fighting games at the time have inputs like this, and it gives you different options for combat. My other major complaint with this game is the difficulty. This is indicative of the time period, since arcade games only cared about getting the most quarters out of you possible. Around halfway through the game, for me it was the fight with Lee on the Great Wall of China, the game just does not give a fuck about you. Opponents do hella damage to you without warning and can move faster than you at random. Obviously, computer controlled players lack the problems that you have with special move inputs, so they can use them willy nilly. What this does is cause extra stress for the player and more invisible quarters to go into your game. Thankfully, the 30th anniversary collection comes with save states, so if the game cheats you, you can cheat it right back. I can confidently say that I would not be able to beat the game without them. Sagat is the fucking worst. 
Besides Ryu, he's the only character with projectiles, which can fuck up your day real quick. His normal attacks also have great range, and he has the other problems that I've stated before about this AI. Also, you don't even get anything good for beating the game, just a message telling you to keep searching for new challenges. There's also local multiplayer. If you have a second controller, you can interrupt a fight to jump into the ring as Ryu's palette swap best friend Ken. But sadly, Ryu and Ken are the only playable characters, so actually this is the most balanced Street Fighter game ever. The only redeeming quality of this game is what I will now dub Car Crash Appeal. You know the game is bad, but you want to see how bad it is for yourself, in the same way that cars will always rubberneck if there's an accident on the highway. This review is a bit shorter than usual, but that's because there isn't really much to say when discussing a game that is about an hour and a half long. While Street Fighter pioneered some fighting mechanics that we know today, the real progenitor of the modern fighting game is the sequel, Street Fighter 2. Next week I'll be looking at the five major versions of Street Fighter 2, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching this episode of Caster Reviews, subscribe for more content from me and follow me on Twitter for production updates. See you soon.